Hey people, it's Larry again. Uh, I had some people ask me what that was in the background of my previous video on the so-called uh, care and maintenance of the uh, filter media that I use in my towers. You know, I'll give you a quick show here. Um, what we have is just a very small, basic indoor aquaponics system that is based on nothing more than a 30 gallon aquarium and I have goldfish in here I guess I have a couple little oddballs as well there's a golden algae eater right there that helps clean things up and I don't know where the two little tiny catfish are they're just little scavenger fish that help clean up the bottom but this system is based on nothing more than gravel beds with a bell siphon in them and all I use this for is growing personal stuff. As you can see on this side, this one's kind of crowded over here, but I got, oh boy, parsley, spearmint, Swiss chard, oregano, uh, Thai basil. On this side I have uh, sage, just common sage, a little more Swiss chard and some lettuce. Arugula, dill, lots of chives. I guess there's chives on the other side too. And a little more, there you go, a little more of the Thai basil. Now this system I am growing under T5 fluorescent grow lights. I only use 6500K temperature bulbs because I really have no need for anything to flower in here. If you want to grow things that flower or produce fruit, uh, you'll probably want to use a mix of 6500K and 3000K bulbs, or just 3000K by themselves. I've heard from other people that those work just fine. And in the middle, I have my little seed starter that I use for starting my plants and my towers outside in my big system. As you can see here, I use rock wool plugs, and I cut them into quarters, and I start things in here. They're supported with nothing more than expanded shale to hold them in the corners like that. But you take those out after they get a certain height, you know, a couple inches, or at least until they have their first pair of real leaves. And uh, then you transplant them out there in the towers, and it doesn't leave any mess in your towers either. Uh, let's see what else here... As you can see, there's a, a pump in here. I can't remember what the volume of that is. I think it's like 750 gallons per hour. Yeah, that's not very high powered. But it goes to a little custom manifold that I made out of half-inch CPVC tubing with some valves. And that's what fills the beds. See, it fills into both sides. And these beds are also uh, filled with expanded shale and uh, lava rock, and probably about, well, it started out at about 500 uh, red wiggler composting worms per bed, but I'm sure they've multiplied. And let's see if I can go over here. I have my own little worm composting bin over there so I can keep providing more worms. Uh, this system is it only takes up about a four foot by four foot footprint, but I have window shears draped around it so it takes up about five foot by five foot when it's all you know said and done. Let's see what else. Oh yeah, you can see some of the plants are a little they need trimmed because I got some dead stuff on there. Um, I'm just going to show you something here. See these little spots on the, the basil, or sorry, the parsley? This is from a potassium deficiency. Now, I'm not trying to play myself off as a scientist, but I know uh, from talking to other people who do aquaponics and um, Heck, even people who took ag in high school and got good grades, they know, you know, when they see that, hey, that 
That's not chlorophyll bleaching because the lights aren't bright enough for that. That's a potassium deficiency. And as you can see, that was the old growth. Here's the new, the new growth, if this camera will focus. And the problem's been remedied. Now, you'll hear some people say, oh, you're supposed to use potassium hydroxide in there. Well, that's not an organic com compound. That's, that's lye. That's the old form of lye. Today, lye is sodium hydroxide. I don't want to use that stuff. I use nothing more than over-the-counter vitamins. So we had the problem there. We dumped some potassium vitamins into the water coming into the grow bed, and what do you know? That little problem disappears. So be careful what you believe. You know, if someone tells you to dump crazy caustic chemicals into your system, um, you're you may cause more harm than good, and more than likely so. I think that's about it. Uh, just thought I would give people a quick view. Like I said, I'm, I'm using gravel beds with the flood and drain, you know, bell siphon. You don't have to do that. You could use small raft beds. You could use uh, V towers or zip grow towers, whichever one. I just do this on a small scale for my own personal use inside. And that's all I need, you know, just you know, a few small fixtures, 30 gallons of water, nothing but goldfish, and they're pretty big. They started out about an inch and a half, oh, last December, and here we are, middle of October, so they've grown quite a bit. I got ones out in my tank in the garage that are even bigger than these, and they came from the same batch. So that's about it. Just thought I would give you a quick view of things. Any questions? Oh, I guess one more thing I forgot to cover. Uh, may not be able to see that. I like to keep my water in this thing at about 71, 72 degrees. Believe me, if you let your water get too hot or too cold, your plants are not going to do well. If you want something that works, you know, all around, stick to that 71, 72 degree range. And aren't you proud of me? I didn't use all of that technical jargon or using phrases that try to make me look smarter than everyone else by, you know, <laughs> everyone else who does videos on aquaponics. They always try to make themselves sound like this big scientist and use big words that they probably don't even understand, uh, like symbiotic relationship. Uh, They'd probably have to go to Google and look it up to see what the true definition is. So, that's it in a nutshell. Again, this stuff works by accident. Yes, you can take a scientific approach and burden yourself with all kinds of stuff that you don't need to know, but if you just want to do this as a hobby, as a quick little experiment, guess what? It's going to work. Um, that's all. Everyone, have a nice day. See you the next time around on the next video.